So for problem number 36, it says solve is a cotangent of theta is equal to negative 1, right? Well, they say cotangent of x. It doesn't matter. Is equal to negative 1. All right. So now we got to remember what is tangent the reciprocal of? Cotangent is the reciprocal of a function. Tangent, right? And so tangent was, think of our triangle. What was it? Yep, it's opposite over the adjacent, which means that cotangent is the adjacent over the opposite. So if I take my little triangle, um, I'm going to end up with an adjacent over an opposite that has uh, negative 1. But I can think of that as negative 1 over 1 or 1 over negative 1. Does that make sense? So now, it tells us where it lives, okay? It tells us where it lives, and it wants us to solve the equation on a specified interval. This is what's really bizarre, and I guess I could change this so it matches the textbook exactly. It says solve for x, where x is trapped between <laughs> negative infinity and infinity. So remember that this whole thing has to fit on an xy plane where this is kind of like x, if you want to think of it that way. So that means I can have a right angle triangle here, and a right angle triangle here, and a right angle triangle here. Now I'm going to change it. I know the textbook says x, but I don't want to confuse you guys. And I'm just going to use theta, OK? So I'm going to say that theta lives here, theta could live here, theta could live here and theta could live here. Now these are the reference angles, and so technically I probably shouldn't even call them theta, right? That might even be confusing. So maybe I'll call my angle, angle alpha. So up here I might call this angle alpha and alpha. And then we'll, we'll, we'll work from there and then we'll change it. I can use any letter I want. We tend to use the Greek letters for angles, okay? Um, so now remember that this can also be on the xy plane. This could also be, uh, well, wasn't this y over x? So this would be x over y. So to, in order to get this, we said it could be that way, or it could be considered 1 over negative 1. Does that make sense? Well, because... One, my x will be negative, and the other, my y will be negative. So this could be the point negative 1, comma 1, and this could be the point 1, comma negative 1. That's how I get to choose which is which. So over here, if I do the first one and I go negative 1, up 1, this is the first one, negative 1, comma 1. So that means that this is definitely a possibility. And then over here, if I go 1, comma negative 1, then this is also a possibility. And so what that tells me is that this is not going to be one of my reference angles, and this is not going to be one of my reference angles. So I'm not going to use those. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, when I go to measure for alpha, I'm going to start here at zero degrees, and then I'm going to swing around to here. And then I can also swing all the way around to here. And those are technically my two angles. And then we can repeat by just adding... Uh, 360 degrees, right? So there'll be a pattern. So I gotta find those two. Well, I gotta remember that the ratio, in order to get over here, to get to this point here, I went negative one in the x direction and one in the positive y direction. Over here, I went one in the x direction and then negative one in the y direction. Now, do you guys remember off the top of your head what that special triangle is? One, one. 45, yeah, it's 45, but it's one, one, root two. Yeah. So that means that my reference angle here is 45, or we could say pi over 4, and over here is pi over 4. And so this is really, if I go from here to here, that's pi, but then i got to cut back pi over 4. So this angle right here then for theta is what? 3 plus pi. Yeah, it's 3 pi over 4, right? 3 pi over 4. For, for, from here to here. That's 3 pi over 4. So alpha can equal 3 pi over 4. Does that make sense? And now if I do the same thing, if I come all the way around here to get to here, it's almost 2 pi. But what's 2 pi minus 
pi over 4. Yeah, 7, 8. So it would be 7 pi over 8. Does that make sense? Okay. It, it, and did they say to leave them in radians and degrees? Was that the answer in the back of the book? That's an even number. I feel pretty confident with that. How could I verify that? I can verify it on a calculator by doing this. Um, I can verify that on the calculator by going in here and let's see what mode I'm in. Oh, parametric. We've got to go to function now. If I graph, cotangent is what with regards to sine and cosine? If tangent is sine over cosine, what's cotangent? Cosine over sine. So if I say cosine of x divided by sine of x, this is the graph of cotangent. And I'm interested when it's going to equal negative 1, right? Graph the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation. So let's just kind of uh, look at what we're doing. Mr. Adams is graphing this and graphing this, and then I'm going to look to see where the two intersect. Does that make sense? Now, if I leave this in radian mode, then I would expect them to cross at pi over 4 and at 7 pi over 4. So now let's graph this. I don't know how that's going to fit. <coughs> and so I'm looking for those two intersections. And I guess it's a good thing I pulled up this calculator um, because we, I, I almost forgot about the negative stuff too. We can go in the negative direction, right? So if I plug in, if I go to trace and I plug in pi over 4, whoops, pi over 4, it, it, when I hit enter, I'm going to guess and say that it'll cross right here. And it should be the intersection of those two points. Ready? And my y value should be negative 1. Oh, it's positive 1. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It was 3 pi over 4, wasn't it? That was what the answer was. Why did I say pi over 4? Because I did what you guys do. I remembered the reference angle, but I forgot that alpha was 3 pi over 4. It's Friday. Everybody's tired. So if I hit trace, what, do I, what should I put in? I should put 3 pi divided by 4, and now it'll work. Oh, man, I got nervous. Right? All right. Now, if I do the same thing again, if I hit trace, and I put um, 7 pi divided by 4, and I hit enter, there it is. Boom. Y equals negative 1. Now, what is the distance? What are we doing between each one? What am I adding to get from 3 pi to 7 pi? 4 pi. 4 pi over 4, which is the same as just pi. Hmm, I wonder if there's a pattern. So what if I were to do this? What if I were to say 7 pi divided by 4 plus pi? That should get me at this little, this third intersection over here, shouldn't it? Because I've got to establish some sort of plus pi, right? We've got to do that sort of deal. All right, so let's see here. Yep. Now, I'm curious. If I do 3 pi divided by 4 and I subtract pi, I wonder if that will get me right here. Let's see. Yeah, it does. So we could pick, we could pick any one of these values. And I could say, remember that the original question had a cotangent of x. So if I, if I substitute the x back in, I could say that this occurs at, um, there's lots of ways I could do it. When x is equal to, um, how would you do that? It'd be 7, 11. How would you guys do that? Could you say 3 pi over 4 plus k pi, and k is an integer. And then you do a similar thing with the degrees. 